We have Myra Oliver on this afternoon. Myra, I really appreciate your time. And if you want to check out what Myra's up to, she's got a YouTube channel. So definitely check that out called Down Home Money. But you can also find her at downhomemoney.com. That's, that's such an awesome domain name. And I mean, talking about branding, you've pulled this off to, to a great level because you're, even your book is called Down Home Money. You can find that on Amazon and a lot of other booksellers, but really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much, JD, for having me. It's great to be with you and just excited to, to share about Down Home Money. Yeah, so let's let's dive right in. I mean, uh, first of all, it's it's interesting. You know, I, I see the the concept of financial freedom a long time. You know, everybody uses that that term. I like that you say a simple approach. It makes it a little bit more approachable. I mean, uh, like you said before, we even started. A lot of people like to stick their head in the sand uh, when it comes to financial freedom, but. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by a simple approach to financial freedom? So, you know, financial freedom is different for everyone, right? Mm -hmm. And so financial freedom for me was to not trade my time for money mm -hmm. and to build passive income streams so that I would earn money without trading my time. So in other words, I could do the things I want to do because a lot of times the things you're passionate about or what you want to do doesn't really make you money. Mm -hmm. And that's what um, financial freedom means to me. I built income streams that threw off a passive income so that I could work because I wanted to work, not because I had to work. Sure. You know, that that's one of those things that I think a lot of people, and it might be a mindset thing, you know, where you said about trading your, your time for money. Um, I, people just don't seem to realize how uh, finite your time is and how valuable your time is and how important it is to really find that why. Uh, I noticed that that's a, a big focus on what you're talking about. Yeah, you know, mindset is everything. Whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. And so you've got to get your mindset around, um, around if you want financial freedom, you have to be willing to do what others won't so that you can have what they don't have. And financial freedom for a lot of people is they just want enough money to pay their expenses and allow them to spend time with their families. A lot of people are working 12, 14 hour days and they're not getting to spend quality time with the people they really love. Mm -hmm. And so that's what it's really about. I mean, my whole goal for the book, honestly, was I just wanted to share because my husband and I, I was a hairstylist, my husband is a policeman and our first goal was to buy enough rental property that would throw off enough money to pay our bills. I mean, truly, mm -hmm. that's what our goal was. So we worked really hard in our 20s and our early 30s um, to, to build a rental portfolio. We built a portfolio of 10 properties, and it threw us off about 5000 a month, which allowed me to sell my hair salon and allowed my husband to quit the police department. And then we were free to do what we wanted to and do the hobbies and the things traveling and the things we wanted to do without being tied to having to go to work every day. So, you know, when you talk about that, is, is there a strategy or a tactic that people probably need to go through? Like you said, you were targeting your monthly expenses. I mean, I, I question, I bet you there's not a lot of people who sit down and, and actually look at their expenses and see what they would need to cover each month. You're exactly right. And honestly, you got to know where you are to know where you're going to go. And so through my book, I share how you've got to first get your mindset right. You need to know why you're doing this because this is not get rich quick. It's delayed gratification and it takes longer. It could take 10 to 20 years to set yourself up to be financially free. And so mm -hmm. it's so important that you know why, because if you know why you're doing it, then you're going to keep going on, right? You're going to keep moving forward. And that's why I started my YouTube channel, because I want people to have a place to go to and get weekly inspiration so that they keep moving forward because it really, your life can get really big when you become debt free and financially free. And so I show people how to get their budget started. I show people how to do their net worth sheet to figure out where they are. And then I'll also take them through figuring out their freedom number. What is your freedom number? 
And a freedom number is the number, the amount of money you need monthly to pay your expenses, you know, the essential expenses, your mortgage or your rent, your car payment or your lease, if you're in the lease, your groceries, the utilities, those are your essentials. And so we work on that. And then we start figuring out what do we need to do? Personally, I love real estate. I've been in real estate for you know 30 years and I love real estate. So I start with real estate and buying that first rental property. Meanwhile, I show them how they can build a, a portfolio for dividend investing and for retirement portfolio through a brokerage account. And I show them how to do that to start building another passive income through compounding. Mm -hmm. So that's really, I show them that there's two different ways. Of course, there's lots of different ways, but those are the two ways that put me, I mean, I, by the time I was 33, I became a millionaire through real estate investing. So you know, as well as I do, real estate, I mean, real estate it really made me who I am today. And then I decided, you know what, it wasn't as passive as I wanted it to be. And now I'm really building also dividend portfolio that takes a little more money to build, to throw off what you, the investment you can have in real estate, you know, vice versa. The, the two of those, as far as which is uh, financially less money, it's obviously real estate, less money right. down in real estate to make the same, you know, returns as yields. Right. You know, no, this is kind of reminds me of what I, I used to do. And, and I, and I probably actually should get back to it. I, I took down, you know, the exercise I did, I, I took down all of listed, all of the expenses I was, I'd have, you know, whether it's internet and, and car payment and what have you. And I had it on a list and I had it taped to my, my uh, bathroom mirror. And then anytime I'd have a different property, you know, I would essentially knock one of those off the list. Yeah. Because then I associated that property or that rental income to that expense. That's exactly that. I love you said that. I used to put affirmations on my, my mirror all the time um, because you're exactly right. I mean, if you'll start seeing that, you know what, um, if I buy this rental property and it throws me 300 a month net cash for my family, I can use that for the utility bill. Okay, mm -hmm. let's go buy another one and work on using that for something else. And maybe it has better cash flow and we get, we're making 700 a month. So that might be able to pay half the mortgage payment. Or, And if you start seeing your money differently, your money shows up differently. Mm -hmm. And I watch a lot of people that make a lot of money because I, I have the opportunity to work with a lot of great real estate professionals. And what I have found, there's a reason 70%, over 70% of our population still live paycheck to paycheck. And so I have opportunity to meet with a lot of people and I coach people and I found a lot of real estate agents live commission check to commission check. And so I have even met with some that make over a million dollars a year, but here they have the same problem that a $50,000 income earner has, which is if you make a million a year and you spend a million too, you still have a deficit of 200,000. Mm -hmm. So it's really not how much money you make. It's how much money you keep and what you do with it. And are you buying assets to throw off a passive income? And so right. that's what I teach at Down Home Money. So, you know, earlier you were, you were talking about uh, better ways to use your time. You know, uh, I, I think that, that kind of goes to something that I've been kind of toiling over a little bit um, for quite a while now. There seems to be a romanticism associated with the grind and, and keeping busy. And, and I, and I question what some of the, what people are doing and how are they using their time? And um, it, you can always be busy, but is it busy towards generating that income or that are they profit finding activities? Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I call it IGA income generating activities. So I look at my calendar, um, especially when I was building my business, and I looked at my calendar and am I doing income generating activities and am I working in my 20% because you know the 80 20 rule right mm -hmm. and so I always looked at that and but I will tell you in 2018 I made a decision and I I used to put in franchise for um, Keller Williams Realty mm -hmm. and I was in Ohio Kentucky and Indiana I was the regional director there and so in 2018 I made a decision to get off that treadmill um, I just decided that, you know what, I really wanted freedom of time again, because that's what happens to us, because you're absolutely right. 
that that fear of not being successful. Well, success comes in all different forms, shapes, and sizes, right? And I think that all of us have this false sense of, um, of what's successful and that money makes you successful. I will tell you, JD, I know a lot of people that um, I coach several people that are financially free. Uh, they're part of the FIRE movement, financial independence, retire early. And they make maybe 50000 a year, but they have true wealth because mm -hmm. they have time with their kids. They're raising their kids. They have freedom of time because consumerism is eating us alive and consumerism is causing us to go in such debt and buying things we can't afford today. So we're putting it on credit, which now we have to keep working because in order to pay for it, that's your future income you're spending today. So mm -hmm. we're living in, you know, we're in the rears. And so what I found is that um, when people really discover what gives them joy, and I have a couple questionnaires in my book that really help people to understand what gives you joy, you're going to discover that it has, is not money related. Having joy does not come from money. Money gives you options. Mm -hmm. So if you want to live in a bigger house or you want a fancier car, but all of this can be done, like the, the couple I was just telling you about, they make about 50000 a year. Um, and their home's paid for. They live in about an $80,000 home. Their cars are paid for. They have no debt. So who is living the better life? The one that's in debt and, and you know, maybe making 300000 a year, but their bills are outweighing their income every month or the ones that, they, you know, they're making 4100 a month um, and have no bills except, the, you know, the utility bills and their food because everything else is paid for. So I think that you kind of have to decide. Financial freedom truly does. I mean, some people, their freedom number is 3,000. I've got a couple, their freedom number is 2,500. They live very cheaply. They, they are minimalist uh, mm -hmm. behavior and they just don't get caught up in stuff or consumerism. So it's very fascinating when you watch, because some people, it would take them 20,000 a month, right? right? And some people 10 and some people five. So it truly is a personal number for you and your um, wants and needs. And mm -hmm. so it's kind of, I always tell everybody, I mean, I had a client call me and they go, should I buy a new car? And I said, well, is that a want or a need? I mean, that's always my first question. And he said, well, it's a want, Myra, I want a new car. And I go, I understand, but in your other car, like three years old, haven't we had this conversation? And he goes, yeah. And I go, doesn't it get you from point A to point B? And he said, yeah. And I said, do you think your car is an asset? And he go, I, I said, are you buying a classic? <laughs> Can we possibly make money later? And he wasn't. And so a car is not an asset. And I think when you get real clear on what are assets and what are liabilities, then you, you really do see your money differently and you spend it differently. Mm -hmm. So just to remind everybody to make sure you head over to downhomemoney.com, check out check out her book as well as find down home money on YouTube, because based on what we're chatting about here, people, I mean, come on, get over to her YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. Uh, I mean, in, in uh, 20 minutes time, she's probably at least giving you enough value to at least go do that for her. Um, with that being said, so you were talking about finding those the finding those things that are assets. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to say something that is probably controversial to some of our listeners. I'm going to even say that you need, we need to find those actions and activities that are assets because we, uh, my, this is another thing I used to do and I probably should do it again because I am terrible at keeping myself accountable, but I used to have a list of, of items that I knew were profit generating actions. And if I got distracted with anything that was outside that list, it had to be done after business hours or on weekends when I knew I couldn't be making phone calls or doing something else. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny you say that because we all have the same 24 hours in a day mm -hmm. and you watch some people and they get so much done and they're just, it's just incredible what all they're doing. They've got the same time you and I have JD. The difference is the pur being purposeful in your day and planning your day and planning your schedule. So I totally get what you're saying. I mean, because I, if I, I mean, if I get really purposeful, things happen, right? But if we kind of blow off the day, we kind of, you know, kind of wander through the day, then things don't get done. And so you're absolutely right. It's the action steps you take. I always tell people where you are today is a result 
of what you did five to possibly 10 years ago and mm -hmm. where you're going to be in five to 10 years is a result of the action you take today. Right. I mean, we, we even see that in marketing. I mean, if we ever wanted to see, especially in real estate investing, we, we know that your yellow letters and your, and your postcards, you have to send those out religiously on a regular yeah. basis because the people aren't going to take that response that initial time. It's, it's that repetitive, consistent behavior that you're doing now that will reap the rewards later. Yeah, and that's the same thing with investing in your retirement account. It's that consistent monthly investment that in 20 years from now, you look back. I, honestly, I started uh, when I was in my 20s and doing $100 a month. And I invested in index funds every single month. I mean, they automatically withdrew it. I, I mean, I did it. And after 11 years, I had 165000 in that account. After a 20 year mark, I had 10 more, add 10 more years to that. And I had over a million one in that account in index funds. I had one fund, I never changed it. I never even looked at it. I just did monthly consistent uh, contributions. And that's what I teach. I teach people, no matter what age you are, if you wanna reach millionaire status by a certain point in your life, I can show you how much money you need to put in monthly so that you can reach that goal. And a lot of times it's just stop the $5 Starbucks coffee, you know, a day. I mean, because it adds up really quick. That'll get you your hundred dollars. Or maybe it's about changing the brands you buy. I mean, my husband and I did a little contest and we went to Walmart and bought the name brands. And then we went back and bought the great value brands of Walmart mm -hmm. and we saved over $30. Um, that's huge. And I honestly did not notice a difference. And I'm pretty much a snob on my coffee creamer. And mm -hmm. I could not tell the difference. And so that is pretty incredible right there to save $30. And you really aren't making big changes in your life. It's the little changes and it's the being consistent with those and taking that money and that getting that money, making you money that can change the trajectory of your life. Right. It's a difference from being poor and living paycheck to paycheck or having wealth and building wealth. That's what it is. Yeah. No, it, it's, it's interesting because, you know, a, a good example of in my life is that I, I tried to change my diet quite a bit and, and I realized how much money I was spending in fast food. And when you take a look at the, the amount of money, fast food isn't cheap anymore. I don't care what people think it is. It, you know, you, you take a family of four to McDonald's and it can be 30 bucks, if not more. I mean, it's, it, it's, uh, it, it's become an expensive proposition now. Yeah. It's, it's shocking how much money we spent on Starbucks and fast food and everything else. And we don't think anything about it. We don't even question it, right? Because mm -hmm. that's the price. So we don't question that. And when you start eating at home, I mean, there's so many different tips about the ways to save money without changing really your lifestyle that much. That, I mean, just because I have people all the time that say to me, Myra, I don't have an extra $100 a month. And then when I sit down with them and I go through their budget and I help them make the cuts that they need to make in order to have that hundred dollars, it's amazing what can happen. I mean, another great tip is if you're making a house payment, if you will make two house payments a month, meaning break your house payment up, let's say your house payment's a thousand dollars to make it easy. You're going to pay 500 on the first and 500 on the 15th. That takes five years off your mortgage. It doesn't change anything. If you're being paid every two weeks, you're saving the money to make the house payment based on your two week paycheck anyway. Why would you not do that? Because if you know you need to check with your lender, most will allow it, but that saves you five years off your mortgage and you didn't change anything. It's not costing you any more money. It just happens to be, it makes extra weeks. And so you end up, uh, end up paying an extra payment every year. I mean, there's so many little things you can alter or change. Even when you tell me you don't have money, you know, a lot of times I tell people, listen, there's two ways to financial freedom. One, you cut your expenses. Two, you make more money. So mm -hmm. there's so many side hustles, JD. I mean, there's just so many things out there that people can do um, and uh, to make extra money so that they can have that extra $100, $200 a month, at least to get started. And then, you know, it's so important you build a reserve account. There's so many th ways to once you get it going, then you start working on a reserve account. So just in case, I mean, who knew this pandemic was going to come? And a mm -hmm. lot of people have lost their jobs. 
And we're going to see a great buying opportunity coming in the real estate market. I haven't bought anything in two years and I buy a ton of real estate. And I have not bought a thing in two years because I, everything's so high. The last thing I bought was a commercial building in Kentucky and for my Keller Williams office. And I haven't bought any homes. And matter of fact, I sold some apartments this year because it was ridiculous. When it becomes ridiculous money, I will sell. I bought five units. I paid 363,000 for them. I just sold them for 890. Yeah. Ridiculous. Okay. I wouldn't have paid it. Did not cash flow. And that's what's happening. People are spent paying too much money for things, but when the market corrects itself and it will, 16% of buyers are, are, are having problems. You know, they're already in delinquency. Mm -hmm. uh, so homeowners. So it's going to be a problem. We're at higher numbers right now in delinquencies than we were back in 09 at the worst right. of the market. So it will be interesting. Uh, it's in, I mean, our inventory is so low. I mean, it's yeah. about supply and demand. And because we have high demand right now, but supply is so low that that's why the market's where it is right now. So did you say 16%? I, I would have expected it to be higher than that. Yeah, I pulled the numbers. Matter of fact, I've got it right here. Uh, according to Core Logic, if you watch Core Logic, mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, and, and maybe they are, because what about, I mean, I mean, I don't know if they're doing, it's just the National uh, Single Family uh, Index is what it is. Sure. But it, I'm it, curious. I mean, it's crazy. I'm curious. I, I would expect that, I, I hate to, to say this, but the small businesses, there's going to be a lot of commercial property too. There's going to be a lot. Um, it, it, you know, because so many people um, had to put off paying. I mean, I know that um, I rent a building in um, Columbus, Ohio for my Keller Williams office there. And I know that, you know, your, your, uh, the, the landlords were calling saying, do you need help or whatever? Um, luckily for us, our business increased 18.9% this last year, which is crazy, but that market is really pretty hot in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, mm -hmm. We did not have those kind of numbers in uh, Denton, Texas. We only increased about 5%, but all three of my office increased. They did not go down. In Kentucky, because Amazon moved in, it's right outside Cincinnati. It's in Northern Kentucky. Amazon came in and it was over 27% also of an increase in profitability. Hmm. For, which is crazy, right? I mean, it's just crazy. It doesn't, that, does, that does not make sense with our economy and all the people losing their jobs and all the things that are going on in the delinquency. It, they, they just don't even, and that's why we, it's a perfect storm. Um, I was in the market pretty heavy and I remember selling tons of houses in four, five, and six. And I remember when those people that bought those houses at the top of the market back then called me in seven, eight, nine, wanting to sell their houses. I remember them bringing a lot of money to closing because, mm -hmm. you know, especially if they bought it for 3%, you know, cause back then FHA's down payment was three, not three and a half. So if they bought it for three uh, and then the market dropped like eight to 9% in area, different areas, uh, they're upside down mm -hmm. in their house, you know, right. because by the time, you know, you have fees to sell. I mean, so it's going to be a really interesting time. I don't, I think if our government extends the moratorium on evictions and on, um, you know, on loans, then I think that, you know, it might be a while before that happens. Uh, there is talk to extend it, you know, they extended it through March and the talk is to extend it through September right now. But if they do do that, then that's just going to push all, all these people can stay in their homes and tenants can stay in their properties. Um, but, you know, landlords are in trouble, too, making their payments. Mm -hmm. They're expecting tenants to pay them the rent. So it is a it is a perfect storm for, um, sadly, for some, and it's an opportunity for others. Just that's, yeah. that's the world the way that we live in. Right. Unfortunately, it seems like we're just pushing the the avalanche down the road. I mean, it's right. <laughs> it's going to happen eventually. Yeah. So it is. Know, it'll I'm, be either the end of the year or I would say the first of next year. Yeah. You know, because it takes a while for all those foreclosures to get through the court process. Remember, none of them right. have even started. So it, that takes some time. So it, right. it's going to be, it's scary and sad at the same time. Right. So uh, I always like to wrap things up a little bit with, with a couple action items that people can do right now. Like, you know, we've co we covered quite a bit of ground talking about financial freedom. Like what is some, what are two or three of that low hanging fruit that they can implement right now to get on the right track? 
Great question. So number one, they need to sit down and spend 30 minutes and do their net worth sheet. Uh, you know, all they need to do is get a clean piece of paper, draw a line down the middle, put assets at the top, liabilities on the other side, and all their assets, write them down and write their current value and all their liabilities, write them down on the other side and write what you owe. Mm -hmm. Down at the bottom, you're going to tally up how, what your assets values are and your, ass, and your liabilities value. Assets minus liabilities equal your net worth. And you need to study that number. And if that's a negative number, which it probably will be if you're in your 20s or 30s, but if you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s, you've really got to take this to heart and you've really got to get serious because that is what you've been working for your whole life. And mm -hmm. if you've been working 20, 25, 30 years and that number is negative, in order to change, when the, hey, let me say this, when the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change, you'll make the changes. And in order to change, you've got to take action. So it's so important that they see where they're at and get a clear picture because you got to know where you are because that will start triggering things in their head about, hmm, is this a want or is this a need? And if you'll start applying that before you buy something, you're going to find that you're going to make better money decisions. The next step is get on a budget. Both of these are on downhomemoney.com on money tools. If you click on money tools, both of these are Excel spreadsheets. And I've also got a rental P and L on there for anybody for free. You don't have to sign up if you just download it. Um, so feel free to use that. It makes it easy because I do everything the simple way. I do not complicate anything. Money is very complicated. And I am very simple in my approach of everything. I have a high school education. So trust me, I'm not going to complicate anything because it makes it too hard for me. I love easy and I will do it. And I've made everything in my life easy. And that's what these forms are. There's a simple budget and you've got to write down your expenses. So that would be the second thing. First thing's the net worth sheet. The second thing is you've got to figure out your budget and be honest with yourself when you write all this down. Let's mm -hmm. see if you're spending more money than you're really making. Right. And then on the third thing is I think that it's so important that you get you a little black book or do it on your phone, whatever you like. I like a little black book. I still do it to the day. I write everything I spend money on and it just makes me very aware of where my money's going. I mean, honestly, if I put a quarter in a gumball machine, I'm going to put 25 cents in the gumball machine. <laughs> so I just think it's so important because then you can see what are you spending your money on? And then you can make changes so that we can cut. The next, the fourth one will be, let's go, let's look at what you're spending your money on and where can we make the cuts? Try to cut 15%. The fifth one is start paying yourself first in your retirement account. You need to open you up. Vanguard is my favorite. You need to start your IRA or a Roth or a SEP, whatever you can do. You need to get that started immediately and start building you another passive income. How's that? No, those are awesome. I, I really appreciate it. And I appreciate your time. Um, I feel like we've only been halfway through this conversation. We could continue to go. Um, and, uh, but, uh, I'm going to leave it there. I really appreciate it again. Thank you so much. And if uh, I hope we can, we, you can be on the, be on again in the near future. I would love to thank you so much because everyone can have financial freedom and I'm on a mission to just show them how we see so much consumerism and, and so many influencers and they're showing how they're spending their money. I want to show people how to save their money so that they can have a really big life and enjoy their families. Well, thank you again. This has been a great episode. Thank you.